you folks tell me. How can a known poison that exists in our food supply or medications and sometimes even in the air you breathe be totally overlooked as the cause of disease in America? Watch me now and soon you too will know the cause. <laughs> Oops, I didn't even button my shirt. I forgot, I had a busy day. Believe it or not, 10 minutes ago, I was almost fast asleep. I was so tired. I worked out today and it hurt to work out. So instead of 30 or 28 minutes, I took 35 because I took a four minute break between reps. Um, I don't know why I'm tired. I feel great. <clears throat> Folks, as I mentioned on uh, my website, I have both health, oh, and I was going to bring it, health insurance. I'm an old guy. I have Medicare and health assurance. That's what I did for 28 minutes today, assured my health. That's what I did when I got up this morning and swallowed my beta-glucan and all my supplements, assured my health. That's what I did when John and I ate a beef stick and uh, had lunch, our lunch was a beef stick. Uh, I, I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I feel as though I was assuring my health. Wow, did I just run across the campus? Ah, that tastes so good. And yet, <clears throat> so many of us, and I can't stand these ads that come on television, and they're so loud. John, if we ever amp up our ads, if somebody gives us another $10,000 to scream our ads on TV, tell me about it. I can't stand these ads that say, Medicare recipients, uh, did you know for free, the call is free. I can't stand those hustler ads. I just... You're not? I never knew that. So I guess it's against the law to scream. I mean, sometimes I'm watching TV, and that's pretty rare anymore. <clears throat> I was watching something the other day, and uh, here comes an ad for seniors. Did you know that there are 20 kinds of Medicare? Why, you can get candy bars on, in a Ford on your way to the doctor's office. And you can go to 20 doctor's offices. We'll take. I can't stand that. I don't like that at all. Now, it's a very personal thing if you have little plan A, B, C, whatever. My, I've never used mine. Mine is six years old, my, uh, uh, my card, my insurance card and I've never used it. I don't want to go to doctors, okay? I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today. If you're going to doctors and you're watching this right now and you don't wanna to go to doctors, now many Americans, folks, there are lines of people who would scream at me for saying, I'm not so sure about this COVID-19 shot because they're gonna get it. And God bless you folks, get in line and get it. What haven't we learned about the flu shot the last 10 years? 19 to 60% accurate? And this is a new shot that we don't know much about? Oh, but you gotta take two of these. Uh, I don't wanna delve into it folks, but uh, I hope you all, and you are, smart enough to study these before you would let them uh, jab you. Even doctors are at the 40 percentile mark, or they were a couple of months ago saying, we're not going to be the first ones to take the jab. Uh, it's fascinating to me, the whole psychology of this blows my mind. At any rate, you all were born with health assurance because God gave you a brain. You all have bought, I mean, we give our employees here health insurance, catastrophic insurance. You know that a year ago now I was hit head on in a car and a young girl that hit me was really bloodied up and hurt. She ran a red light and hit me. And my bags opened and I was absolutely fine. And the paramedics came and said, are you sure? Look at your car, total car. Uh, don't you want to go to the doctor? Ah. If I was sitting there with my arm hanging off with a bloodied face, I probably would have said, no, it's just a scratch. I'll go home and get this fixed. My problem, folks, is sometimes I think emergency medicine, which I was trained in, can be life-saving, especially in a war situation, a, a collision, a catastrophic injury, something, gunshot wound, I think life-saving. Um, but what I'm concerned about is what else goes on inside those halls of science. I wonder how, one thing I'm afraid of is nosocomial infections. These run rampant in hospitals and medical clinics. 
a nosocomial infection is when your hospital is sick. It's got a mold or bacteria oozing from the ducting system, HVAC, um, and that is because in that hospital are many, many sick patients, and they have to inhale and they have to exhale. And that exhale is picked up in this circulating system and sent down to pediatrics or the morgue or the birth delivery, you know, OBGYN. Um, I'm just so glad I have figured out how to stay well. <clears throat> and that's what I want to try and teach you here today. If you're one of those who are using your health insurance card like it's a MasterCard, um, and you want out of that cycle, folks. Look, I understand. So many of you are sick, and you're getting sicker and sicker and sicker. That's why this show is necessary. You're never, ever going to hear this in your doctor's office. And yet I worked in dozens of those doctor's offices. Blew the doctor's way first. I had to. I had to build their confidence uh, that, number one, that patient wasn't going to leave them because we could get them better. And number two, we could fix their problem. But the first thing you have to do is identify it. Doug, I have a problem with my lungs, Doug. I'm hacking up and coughing and uh, constantly my sinuses are blocked up. And I've been to pulmonologists. I've been to ear, nose, and throat doctors. And they say, well, take this antibiotic. I don't want to do it anymore, Doug. My allergies are so bad. My ears itch. My hair is falling out. You know the story. You read the woman's book, right, my opening chapter where I talked about that, and it's pathetic what I've heard. Women who have spent $1,800 on lab tests, and to no avail, finally find a doctor who will see them, maybe, that can help them with their problem. Uh, they go to a symposium or something, and they're excited, and they walk in and shell out another $1,800 for the exact same test, and the doctor says, I'm sorry, you're all normal. i got to tell you, Mycotoxins are the great pretenders. Bacteria don't make them. Viri don't make them. Only fungus makes mycotoxins. There's probably 900 to 1,000 of them out there, and they can induce any disease or any symptom throughout the human body, and they do. Now, that is catastrophic if you don't know about it, so let's go back to medical training. Zero. A lot of, you know, pharmacology. I'm sure most medical training, although I haven't been through it, is pharmacology, because you got to learn to prescribe and prescribe and prescribe, right? Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, bacteriology, huge. Virology, huge. Protozoa study, huge. Mycology, what's that? Oh, you mean vaginal yeast. Oh, you mean little ringworm. Oh, jock itch. Onychomycosis, nail fungus. Oh, yeah, we were trained in that. Were you trained that many lung cancer diagnoses were wrong? No. We're doctors. X-rays don't lie and laboratories know. I got to tell you, folks, that's what this is all about. I don't have all the answers. I didn't go through medical training. Instead, I spent decades working with doctors in clinics. And when I built up the trust in those doctors, their antifungal prescriptions flew. My diet became popular uh, for a reason. There's a reason this 20-year-old book, here's one of my, the, is this the, yeah, this is the first, the third edition of Fungus Link number one. There's a reason this book flies off our shelves. You should see our patio out here on the campus. We're behind a gate. And the UPS guy, John, just left, by the way, picked all those up. This is a tw 1998, one of Dr. Weekly's patients said to me, Doug, uh, she had breast cancer and she was doing wonderfully, sent her daughter to me, and I forget what I saw her daughter for, but she said, what you typed up on your little word processor was very much like mine. A few things were different, but you told her to stay on this diet, you told her to get some psyllium, uh, and so forth. And it worked for her, and it's working for me. Could I ask you a question? Instead of every one of those doctor's patients seeing you and you getting out of here at 6 p.m., why don't you write a book? And I went home and told my wife, and she said, brilliant, write a book. So Dr. Beverly Hunt, who was a, a client of ours, Dr. Dave Holland, who he and I started this whole thing together, uh, wrote this book, The Fungus Link One, 
how allergies, arthritis, digestion, respiration problems, mental health, heart health, women's health problems, and pain are intimately linked to fungus. The really sad part is you don't know that because they don't know that. This isn't your fault unless you've happened on to know the cause. And we're going to be in 120 million more households uh, here at the end of this month and the beginning of December. So I, uh, I'm so excited about that. I know a lot of people will learn this. I'm doing this because of that two-inch file down there. The past two years, we've collected testimonials from you guys. You've written in and said, thank you, Doug. I had you fill in the blank. And now it's gone. I feel so much better. Thank you. That's why I do this. One of you, hopefully a hundred of you, I will plant seeds in you as long as I have breath in my body. I will plant seeds. And one day when you hear the news, boy, Doug got hit by a bus, um, one of you will take it over. There's my books. I got a whole library across the campus. Take it over. Help people. It's ironic to me that the Bible is replete with mildew and leavening and yeast. Don't be like the yeast of the Pharisees. Don't be a fool. And yeast is good. We should drink kombucha. We should eat yeast cereal. That's good. How come in that old book, thousands of years old, it's bad? And in medical books and popular books, it's all of a sudden good. I don't know. All I know is what I've learned, and I hope I don't have all the answers. I hope to pass this information along to you. Now, on my preview today on uh, Know the Cause, I wrote, and by the way, thank you, Damon. Folks, if you want to see, did you see today's show? You want to see it? You want to see it tonight at midnight? You want to see the other show we did? We do two every day. Go to Know the Cause, pull down Watch, and watch both shows. They're each about 28 minutes. Uh, are they with or without ads? John? 23 minutes. Okay, good. Uh, thank you. Without ads. Well, <clears throat> I keep a file called mind-boggling blogs on my computer. And through the weeks, I, I put stuff in there, folks. <laughs> I still find medicine and science quite comical. Sorry, I do. Here's a headline that you may laugh at, I did. Poly pill, a poly pill? With or without aspirin in persons without cardiovascular disease. People without cardiovascular disease taking a pill? Oh, not any pill. This is four pills, three blood pressure medicines and a statin drug, plus an aspirin. Five pills put together. Stuff like this, you can't make this up. First of all, they're playing God. We know you're going to die of cardiovascular disease, and we're going to save your life. Do you see, please see where this is going? I don't have COVID. you got to take a vaccine. This is all about getting us from womb to tomb, not on supplements. Remember, David Kessler is now coming to the Biden uh, uh, to the Biden group. Uh, David Kessler was the head of the FDA when I was young in the 1990s and vowed against supplements. He's now part of the Biden team. Thank you, John. Wow. Thank you. You people are so awesome to keep these testimonials coming in. So, uh, so folks, the whole game plan, please hear me. A doctor believes preventive medicine is a flu shot. I believe preventive medicine, especially during these cold times, and I've told you this, is to double up on my beta-glucan, to make sure I take my supplements, my multi and my supplements every day, and even when it's cold outside, I have some old sweats with holes in them that I bring here to this studio and I have at home. And I have two of my, you know, maxi climber machines. And uh, it doesn't matter. If I was in snow, I would go inside and I would do that. Because I'm 71 years old. And I am at high risk of diseases, so I'm told. Poly pill, with or without aspirin, in persons with, in healthy people. Just published, New England Journal of Medicine. 
published by Burroughs Welcome, or Welcome Burroughs, which is, has a division of the Gates Foundation. And so it's all beginning to make, I don't know Bill Gates, but I know he gave Welcome, uh, this organization, $125 million in March. 10% by as much as 40%. A new international study reports the polypill containing three generic blood pressure, I can't even believe I'm reading this, three generic blood pressure medications and a statin drug dramatically reduced the risk of heart-related disease in people with no prior history of heart problems. You're well. Take the, I knew this was coming. I just didn't know when. Don't be shocked. If next year, when you visit a doctor, he says, hmm, I'm going to put you on a medication, right? What was estrogen for 55-year-old women? Estrogen, progesterone, even better. Their libido will increase, and by gosh, we doctors want that, and we men want that. Their wrinkles won't be as bad. They won't get breast cancer, and they won't have a stroke with this medicine, and for decades, they continued that. What did the Women's Health Initiative terminated in the year 2000 prove? We shouldn't have been putting people on drugs when they were well. God shuts off hormones, not a doctor's office. We're at it again. And listen to this. To me, well, we've estimated, I love this. This is what I, God bless statisticians. We've estimated that even if just one half of people with high blood pressure and diabetes, where diabetes come from, were treated with such a polypill, at least somewhere between two and four million premature deaths, heart attacks, and strokes would be avoided every year. We've estimated. Oh, by the way, we want the money for the prescriptions. We've estimated. Do you see the way these things are worded? Researcher Samuel Youssef, professor of medicine at McCaster University in Canada. Such a polypill would have other benefits as well, Youssef said. It would be easier for patients who wouldn't have to juggle fistfuls of daily medications and for doctors who only want to write one prescription. Do you see the glory, the breakthrough in their minds? My mind is infinity miles beyond their mind. A single pill is also cheaper to market and distribute. I personally would just like to get people to use the components, either separately or together. If it's more convenient together, why not, Yusuf said. So they base this on something called an inner heart risk score. So their statisticians had healthy people fill out this, this risk score. How old are you? I'm at a risk. I'm 71. The older you get, the closer to death you get, right? Um, what year were you born, da, da, da. Enter your gender. Just so happens males have twice the cardiovascular events that females have. I'm a double risk. Past medical history. Dad had a pacemaker, was on lots of drugs, I'm sure due to stress. Remember, I was his son. Um, you know, medical history. Do you have high blood pressure? Have either or both of your biological parents had a heart attack? Mine did. Tobacco. Mom and dad smoked like chimneys. They both did. I never did. I tried. Did I ever tell you this, John? In Vietnam, you used to get sea rats, sea rations, right? Little cardboard box. And in it would be brown containers. And you used your little uh, opener to open up the top and you'd eat them. And sometimes peaches came in those. And sometime, uh, we, we call them beans and balls, just these round, some kind of meat and horrible beans, cold. Uh, but in that little packet came cigarettes. I think there were four cigarettes, chiclets, gum, little toilet paper. It all came in, in this little tiny neat box. And uh, I would swap my cigarettes for peaches whenever I could. But one time I tried to smoke. Um, I don't know what smokers get out of that, but I coughed. I didn't feel well in the morning. I had a sore throat. My dad told me, John, you used to smoke, right? Uh, that wasn't on your application, by the way. Yeah, uh, he did about 40 years ago. My dad told me that when he smoked, 
he got high. And I was an impressionable age. I was probably 16, 17 years old. So getting high is okay, right? What, smoking kept? You couldn't sleep when you smoked? Oh, okay. So it'd keep you up working. Wow. So at any rate, how many cigarettes do you smoke? Uh, stress. Are you under a lot of stress? This is 2020. Are we under a lot of stress? I have never seen so many ads. Folks, this is fascinating, the brilliance of how this is being set up. I'm telling you, I have the utmost respect for the pharmaceutical industry if I don't have to buy their wares or be involved in their wares. To watch them, to watch this being, to watch the hamsters on the wheel is fascinating how this is, are we under stress? During the past 12 months, have you felt sad, blue, or depressed for two weeks or more? Well, how about nine months, 10 months? Yes. Physical activity. How active are you during your leisure time? What kind of a question is that? How active are you during your leisure time? There's active time and there's leisure time. Medicine. Uh, mainly sedentary, I sit, read, da-da-da. Mild exercise, I do yoga or archery. Uh, heavy exercise, walking, bicycling, lifting, at least four hours a week, that would be me. Strenuous exercise, running, jogging, football, vigorous swimming, see, I like all those. Diet, I love medicine. Here's how they're going to assess if you're healthy. Do you eat salty foods? Oh, salt kills people, folks. Just so happens our body's made of a good percentage of salt. Do you eat deep fried foods? Do you eat fruit one or more times a day? Do you eat vegetables one or more times a day? Do you eat meat? Meat is a killer. If you only knew. If you only knew. And I hope from this I can help teach you about that. Then th I thought this was funny. Waist circumference. I don't know. Uh, okay, then it went down here. Hip measurement. A hip measurement. While standing in front of a mirror, look for the largest point of your buttocks and place the measuring tape at that position and wrap it around your middle. When I'm standing in, I may be built differently than all of you, but when I'm standing in front of a mirror, my butox isn't showing. And I don't know how to turn so I can see it. I don't think I've seen it for a long, long time. But once again, in 2004, 16, 17 years ago, a Medscape, a newsletter, said the nine things you can do to prevent an acute myocardial infarction. You and I, heart attack. Doctors, myocardial, an acute, not a, you know, not long term, an acute, myocardial infarction. Evaluating more than 2,900 subjects, yada, yada. These nine factors, okay. Abnormal apolipoprotein. Uh, levels are used to evaluate cardiovascular risk. Apolipoprotein test, your doctor knows all about. Cigarette smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, abdominal obesity, psychosocial variables such as stress and depression. We are living in 2020. Exercise, la or lack thereof, diet and alcohol were other variables. So this is what, you know, this is what they did on these people and found them to be without cardiovascular risk. Then they put them all on either this poly pill or a poly pill with aspirin. Gosh, that's so amazing. This is just, I'm telling you, I feel like I'm back in 1972. Um, and, or a placebo. And they had deaths. They had four or 500 deaths during this 4.6 year period where they studied these 5,700 people. Uh, but the majority of deaths occurred in those who got the placebo. And then they sent in, of course, statisticians to do the numbers, to run the numbers, and they found that um, uh, there were fewer deaths of healthy people. When they took their prophylactic medication, I never thought we'd see this. It's happening in a theater near you soon, believe me. And if doctors won't prescribe it, their pharmacists will. Just like if doctors aren't going to give this shot, pharmacists will. Amazing. Okay, let's get on to your uh, questions. Can I tell you the Kaufman list? You want to know what I think 
contributes to a shortened lifespan? Mycotoxins, antibiotics, cereal grains, uh, North American meats with estrogen mimicking xerelinone, cigarettes. Cigarettes have Aspergillus fumigatus. Aspergillus fumigatus makes the mycotoxin gliotoxin, among others. Gliotoxin is known to suppress immunity. Um, this is a nasty mycotoxin. By the way, it was thought 10 years ago that Candida albicans made gliotoxin also. I've read two reports that say it does, two reports that say it don't. I think the jury's out. So cigarettes, antibiotics, alcohol of any kind is on my list. That's number four. Uh, other medications. Didn't we tell women 20 years ago, you all need to be on estrogen and progesterone? Oops, sorry women. No, you didn't. Because you had more breast cancer and strokes while you were on that medication which we prescribed you. When will we see the light, folks? They're not going to. So we need to. A sedentary lifestyle. A vitaminosis. Berry berry. Remember berry berry was what a thiamine deficiency. Uh, scurvy was a niacin deficient. Uh, scurvy was a vitamin C, and pellagra was a niacin. This is the reason I tell you a good multi. We we don't see these diseases today like we did in the 16th and 17th century. A vitaminosis. It is the person today. You may be among them who are swallowing the daily multivitamin and absorbing nothing. You see, you aren't what you eat. You are what you absorb. Many of us have kind of a clay formation in our intestine. We can't go to the, uh, to the bathroom. When we do, it's as thin as a pencil. Imagine what's blocking it. Okay, so try and get that gunk out of there. Start with anti-parasites, start with psyllium, start with good probiotics, start with a change diet, start with drinking three times the water you're now drinking. Uh, so A vitaminosis, A mineralosis. You're eating green leafy vegetables and getting nothing from it. You're eating carrots and you're not getting a thing from it. Okay, so it all starts with the gut. And then finally, high stress. Um, and I can't expound on that enough. You guys have already done that. Okay, we're going to start with a testimonial. Thank you so much, Tina. Okay, Doug, thank you so much for all you do. Without your knowledge, my husband would have under, had undergone a biopsy after his PSA test. We first tested with a marker. With a, so folks, a PSA it stands for prostate-specific antigen, and it's not. When the name is wrong, how good is the test? And yet every urologist in America uses it today. Step right up. Let me take your PSA test. Okay, I'm not a lover of this test at all because I met the doctor who found it. When I was in Vietnam, um, Dr. Ablin was working in a laboratory and he found this enzyme that they were hoping could be a marker for prostate swelling or prostate cancer. They tested and tested and tested and threw it away. It didn't work. But Big Biotech was around San Diego at that time and picked it up. Oh, don't get me started. Pop, 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 pop. So that's what the PSA test is. Prostate specific. By the by, pregnant women who don't have prostates can have elevated PSAs. So it's not prostate specific. Like many things in medicine, folks, smoke and mirrors. He was first tested with a marker of 8.6. We did not know at the time about what you do. The uro urologist told him to get an MRI, magnetic resonance imaging a, a scan. Per the MRI, a small lesion was found for which they told him he had prostate cancer and wanted him to undergo biopsy immediately. In the meantime, I found your information. We went on the Kaufman diet and opted for a second opinion. We got an appointment with another urologist uh, after we had been on Kaufman diet for two months. We asked the new urologist if diet would help the situation. The new doctor said, said there are no studies. That's a, oh. Father, forgive them. There are no studies that suggest that diet can play any part in helping cancer. The new doctor also recommended a biopsy. We insisted on another PSA test before we would schedule a biopsy. He begrudgingly agreed, but said he would not change his opinion on getting the biopsy, as he would be surprised if the PSA level would go down far enough for him not to recommend it. The next day, the new doctor called himself and told my husband his PSA marker was now 3.8. By the way, zero to four, four and a half is considered normal. He was very surprised. He now could not recommend a biopsy. 
this after two months on your diet. We cannot thank you enough. God bless you. Uh, Tina, that's going into the file, which is now that thick. There's got to be something here. Fungus isn't everything, folks. But it's been so grossly overlooked, and it's been given to us. That's what antibiotics do. God put good bacteria in your intestine when you were born. And guess what? We now know that good bacteria make the B vitamins and make healthy things uh, in our body, keep us strong. So what do we do when you're born? We erase it very quickly with an antibiotic. It just, for me, sitting here, it's so frustrating. I worked in that. I worked in that for years and years and years. And folks, in their defense, they don't know how to change this. In my opinion, the doctor that stops writing prescriptions and starts recommending probiotics and vitamins, well, not probiotics, they're finally on the good side of things. Doctors recommend them. But vitamins and a changed diet. Can you imagine this guy driving home in the evening? Why, that's quackery. He couldn't have lowered his PSA by more than half just by changing his diet. Uh, yeah, he could have, Doc. That's why you never learned it in your medical training. Intervention equals money. Maintaining a person on your medication equals office visits, money. Go with me here. So I just, I, I, need, I thank you, uh, Tina, because when I teach people this, it's one thing. When you teach this, it's a whole other thing. I don't have anything I'm selling. I don't want you to buy the Doug Kaufman, you know, prostate formula, et cetera. There are plenty of good ones out there. Diet is everything. This is why you don't teach diet, clinical nutrition, in medical training. One day, folks, we're going to figure this out. Wow, okay, I've got to, John, I'm going to take the rest of the time and just read all this. But we'll keep that one forever. Okay. That's a good one. We have so many in there. And I hate to be hurried, but I know you guys have so many questions. Uh, Barb says, Doug, I have mycotoxins in my body, but I can't even take the smallest amount of diflucan. What would you suggest? If you've had urine tests, blood tests, etc., and they have found certain mycotoxins, it's a good idea to get them out of your body. You just heard me say that psyllium binds mycotoxins in the gut. So before you go to bed at night, get some psyllium. Uh, one of my advertisers, I think, has one of the best. It's a blonde psyllium with antimicrobial components to it. It's called Poop Doc. P-O-O-P-D-O-C. You can go to poopdoc.com and talk to uh, them. Wonderful people. So bind those mycotoxins in the gut. Okay. Um, my concern is gut permeability or what we call gut hyperpermeability. I believe most of us have little holes from yeast burrowing in. In the absence of bacteria to compete for a food supply, uh, when the bacteria is gone, the yeast can go hyphal on you, can grow filaments, and those filaments can poke a hole through the lining of the intestine, and in goes the milk and cheese and eggs, and you're making antibodies to it. Somebody takes your blood for a food allergy test. I was in that business for many years. You guys know my past, and I got out of it because I think sometimes with food allergy tests, what we're measuring is what's leaking through the gut. So we made an antibody to it. That's the way I wish COVID-19 testing work. You take the antigen and present an antibody via your B cells. For some reason, COVID's not going that way. Uh, but that's, that's the way it works. So uh, I would do psyllium. I would change my diet immediately, and I would look at natural. Natural antifungals. Niacin. Take a good multi every day. Folic acid, pyridoxine, B12, cyanocobalamin. Take... Take a good B12 every day, and maybe at night before you go to bed, take resveratrol, that which makes purple grapes purple, has powerful antifungal properties, and eat foods, greens. I'll never forget um, when I was studying to give the presentation to the oncologist in San Diego a few years ago, I came across a paper that said chlorophyll, and you can get chlorophyll drops, you can swallow chlorophyll capsules, were... Um, were chemoprotective. I had to look up that word. Those on chemotherapy that suffer the rag, uh, ravages from it, they were protected by chlorophyll in the gut. So uh, 
Study nutrition as though your life depended on it because they didn't learn it. No harm, no foul. These are really smart people, twice my IQ, that go through medical training. And then somewhere along the line, folks, they are re-social nutrition companies, I think, out there today. Uh, life Extension, it, my advertisers on TV were vetted and they are some of the greatest people and greatest companies and have stood the test of time. They've been here for a long, long time. And the reason that they enjoy me is my audience loves what I'm saying. I'm teaching about fungus and therefore I'm teaching about life extension. I'm teaching about RegActive. The same company that, uh, that makes available Dr. O'Hara's probiotics made a deal with this company from out of the country. I met their doctors. I'm telling you, talking with them, way over my head, brilliant. But there's a bacteria that makes glutathione in your body. Glutathione is what we call the master antioxidant. Um, and it supplies the liver. Glutathione helps the liver. Well, you had to take, you can't swallow glutathione in a health food store and make glutathione. You have to take its precursor, which is called N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. Uh, N-acetylcysteine, eventually enough of it, makes glutathione in your body. Or you could plant bacteria, like little munitions factories, that makes glutathione. That's what RegActive is. So, Phyllis, the bottom line is, if your liver is having problems, if your doctor notices your uh, liver enzymes are skewed. If you're noticing liver problems yourself, um, then I, I, it's safe to take forever. I mean, these are good bacteria. And uh, I took it for over a year. I probably took it 15 or 16 months, and I'll still rotate it in. I will still rotate RegActive. I, I trust those doctors so much. The company introduced me to those doctors because they know we vet, we're careful with who we let we turned down some money, um, but that's okay. In the end, if I wouldn't take it, or if I suspect that this isn't on the up and up, why would I teach you about it? RegActive is a good one. Six months, uh, and if your liver enzymes are skewed, go back and get a blood test and see if they're better now. Isn't that cool? This is such a great probiotic. Now, this is Tina again, who just gave us that amazing, I gave you the amazing testimonial, but I have a question, oh, to be kept brief, but somehow I'd like to get a testimonial to you. Good. That, I, we did that. Thank you so much. Okay, are you familiar with the test? Yes, I am, the PSA. If he gets a test and it indicates whatever high mark it might indicate, should we then ask that doctor uh, to put my husband on Nizoral and Spornox? or whichever antifungal works best for prostate first. Just see, you know, John and Damon and I, as we're locking up here and shutting off all the lights and headed home, we, the three of us stand here and go, you know, we review these questions, and even the ones I didn't get to. Is this the most amazing audience? Not me, folks. My voice would be falling on deaf ears if it weren't for your attentiveness, learning, taking notes. Um, this is a good question, Tina. In 1997, in a journal called the Medical Tribune, it's a journal for uh, general practitioners, Dave Holland, who helped me write these books, wonderful doctor, brought me an article. And it said that Niacinol lowered PSA values. Of course it does. I had been helping men with prostate problems before that for 30 years. So that was 50 years. Um, with Nizoral. Nizoral is called ketoconazole. A-Z-O-L-E is the important part. Antifungal, like fluconazole or itraconazole, Spornox. The first time I ever read that an antifungal would help men with a swollen prostate was an article on uh, Nizoral. Now, Nizoral, I think, is more toxic because Spornox, later generation, these tend to absorb into the bloodstream, whereas the Nizoral and the old, you know, Amphotericin B and some of the old antifungals seem like they fall right to the liver. The, uh, Spornox and Lamisil and Diflucan are absorbed into the bloodstream better, okay? I would probably, it, this has been reported, uh, prostate cancer, 
the use of nice or the use of Spornox, I'd probably go with a hundred milli. Ask the doctor maybe if he could try a hundred milligrams twice a day of Spornox. Let me just teach you something, Tina. You had that new doctor at Hello. You blew his doors off. He saw he had an eight and a half PSA. He knew he was going to do a biopsy. He's a good doctor. He's uninformed. Uh, he's a doctor, so he's well informed. Uninformed of what, of the role of fungus in many illnesses. So I, if I had gone through medical school, I would be, a, in my humbled opinion, of no help to you. I'd be one of these TV doctors. Yep, yep, COVID. Yep, you gotta wear a mask. Yep, you gotta. You know, I'd be, uh, I'd, I'd be one of those. Instead, um, I go where doctors didn't go. What don't doctors learn in medical training? They don't learn mycology. They don't learn clinical nutrition, where you sit down with a patient and say, for seven days, I want you to fill out this diet diary then bring it back to me and we're going to go over and I want you to put everything you put in your mouth. If you eat a fig before you go to bed at night, I want it on that list. And then I want you to grade from zero to ten how your headaches are in the beginning of every day, in the middle of every day, and at the end of every day if headaches were your problem. Folks, you can usually figure out on a diet diary like that that there is a dietary role. Well, they don't learn that in medical training. They learn which drugs, furanol. They learn which drugs to give patients. How much money is there in sitting down with Tina's husband and saying, okay, we're going to aggressively go get this. We're going to do 16 biopsies. Don't worry, I'm going to do everything right. I'm going to get back to you and, and tell you where they He meant good. He's a good man. This is what medical school taught him. Tina, you and your husband blew him out of the water. They couldn't be telling me the truth. They just could not be telling me. They must have done something else. They must have gotten some hormone interrupters or some kind of drugs during that two months. But in fact, you change your diet. You starved fungus that can live in the prostate. Okay? So I would use Sporanox, probably 100. <laughs> could, John, would you mind showing that? Tina, for your benefit and for all of our benefit, you know, there's the consensus among doctors the biopsies are absolutely necessary. See, I've often thought, and let me walk down this road with you guys for a minute. If I have a lump in my breast, make a little incision, use a little lidocaine, cut it out, put it in a jar of formaldehyde for me, sew me up, and now I'm either lump or cancer free. That's the way my mind thinks. Don't put a hole in it. Don't stick a hole in that lump. Here's a colon biopsy. Ouch. Now watch what happens seconds later. Diseases are carried. Germs are carried in blood. This, you know, even when I showed this to groups of doctors, it's fascinating, folks. That blood is now saturating, and, and remember, the heart just continues to pump our blood. That blood is now saturating the person's body. So if there were mold spores in there, they're now going to go somewhere else. They're going to move around. Why can't we make a little cut, take the lump out? Why have so many women gone to Mexico, paid $100 cash, had the lump taken out? I wouldn't recommend that. Why do our doctors not take the lump out? I wish someone would answer that, and I know I've worked around enough doctors, I know this is what they learn in medical training, um, because Doug, by taking that lump out, we don't know its margins, we don't know how deep that lump is, take out the first layer. You know, I, I'm lost on all this, I don't know why we intervene so often, uh, and especially in the prostate. Wow. The urethra of the male, the urine tube, goes right through the prostate. And when this thing swells, and I think it could be a, a male yeast infection, I've always thought that a prostate infection is just a male yeast infection. Where did he get it? Well, he's carrying on a healthy, normal, loving relationship with his spouse. He's exposed to yeast in his urethra, okay? And the prostate's just a mile north 
of the tip of the penis, okay? So it, 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 you're going to be exposed to yeast. Wouldn't that make the prostate swell? What makes bread swell? Wouldn't that clamp down on the urethra so I'm dribbling at night? Tell that to your urologist. Okay, so Spornox would be my, uh, if he gets over, depending on how old he is, I think when you're my age, they think four and a half, 4.6 is probably normal. Um, uh, but four, zero to four is usually considered within normal limits. It will vacillate, to be candid with you. I've been in this field a long time, Tina. It'll go up to 4.2, down to 3.2. Um, watchful waiting is what I hope your doctor tells you. Those are the two words you want to hear. Careful with this diet, antifungals, natural antifungals. Um, things we talk about on this show. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acid, cardioprotective Fatty acids are antifungals. So, <clears throat> uh, Barbara says, uh, breathing issues. What can help my friend? She uses oxygen at night, but heaviness on chest now in daytime. Barbara, thank you. Thank you for loving your neighbors and friends. And, um, okay, this can be resolved one of two ways, I believe. The first is probably most prudent given that she's on oxygen, and that's go to any pulmonologist and get a bronchoscopy done, simple procedure, where they go into her lungs, take out a little bit of tissue, and put it on a Petri dish and grow it out. A friend of mine who's a pulmonologist does, you know, 40 of these a month. 80% of them are yeast. But doctors believe, was that me, John, hitting my mic? Man, I'm sorry. Um, Oh, <laughs> doctors believe every lung infection is bacterial. Remember, antibiotics feed yeast. So if you have a first time yeast problem, chronic sinusitis, and you go on antibiotics, there's a pretty good chance this acute problem is going to become a chronic problem. They don't mean to do this. They're good people. That's what they learn in medical training. The answer to everything that walks in your office is a prescription, or maybe three, okay? Um, so I would have a bronchoscopy. If, not, if this were me, I'd uh, change my diet now. Just uh, talk to Tina, talk to Tina. All she did, that's a very high PSA, eight and a half, very high. All she did for 60 days was change her diet. Barbara, you know the diet. I've seen your name here. You and I are friends. Um, would that same diet help your friend? I think so. What does it do? It doesn't kill fungus. It starves fungus, no matter if it's in the prostate, the inner ear, the nair, or the lung. It can be starved. Okay. Uh, hey, Doug, Jackie here from New Zealand. What happened in New Zealand? We were talking about those poor people in New Zealand, John. I think it was lockdown or something where they had very little COVID. A friend had his prostate reduced by slicing some of it off a few years ago. A friend had his prostate reduced. Am I reading this right, Jackie? By slicing some of it off a few years ago. I'm just kind of thinking of myself with a pocket knife trying to slice off part of my prostate. He now says the reading should be 5, and now it's 6.6. .6. By slicing, there's, there's a... Um, could you please comment? Could you also please comment on the fact that my son and family have moved to Spain and they have mold on their walls and their rental property due to moisture from changes in hot and cold temp? I hear Spain, Italy, older, you know, 500-year-old buildings are very vulnerable to this. So get your son a Pioneer. Get him for Christmas. Send him one of these. Let me just show you, Jackie. Oh, you're in New Zealand. I bet they'd mail one of these to you. Oops. That's a Pioneer unit, that little guy right there. Uh, it lights up beautiful blue as a night light at night. Plug it in, turn it on, and 350 to 1,500 square feet of your house are remediated from mold. Put it in their bedroom. I'd probably get them a 350. That's the least expensive one. Put it in their home, and uh, you'll rest assured knowing that this stays on night and day forever. We've had ours on for years and years. And as far, I don't understand reduce by slicing some of it off. He had his prostate reduced. Oh, I think what you're saying, Jackie, is they did a biopsy. They took some 
uh, tissue from it. And they would have taken a lot. They don't do a biopsy on a prostate. They do 15 biopsies. Um, and then his PSA went up. That was my argument when you saw the biopsy on the colon a minute ago. When you go in there and cause bleeding, I think whatever is in that cancer, you enable to spread. So I would think, the, uh, here's what I would do. Hey, I wonder if Tina and Jackie, she's in New Zealand, they can private message each other. Jackie, uh, private message uh, Tina, and Tina, please help Jackie get started, both with her son um, and uh, with her friend here who uh, has this prostate disease. Do you got two months? Does he have two months? Give it a try. I think uh, he may be very happy. Uh, hi, Doug. Uh, this is Aileen. Could you explain or find in your books what mycotoxins or what mycotoxins or fungi cause neuroendocrine cancer? Um, okay, Aileen. Of the million and a half perceived fungi out there, we don't know, we're guessing. They say that thus far they have harvested and documented 300 that are human pathogens. These 300 become pathogenic in two ways. They can induce allergy, like we used to test for cephalosporin, alternaria, hormodendrum on people's arms. So they can make you sniffle if you're inhaling them. Or they off-gas a poison called a mycotoxin. As far as which mycotoxin induces uh, a nerve cell or endocrine cancer, it could be candida, which is pathogenic. It could be aspergillus, it could be foma, it could be, you know, one of 300. Thanks, John. Um, and uh, if I had any kind of a cancer, any kind, you know that paper four years ago that I always expound on here, they have found that the drug Sporinox, which just happens to annihilate toenail and fingernail fungus, also has crossed the water and become a cancer drug that's working. Gee, what could cancer be? If it kills fungus and that's all it does, what could cancer be? Just asking. Endocrine, remember, mycotoxins are endocrine disruptors. So if you've got thyroid problems, if you've got diabetes, it hinders th uh, endocrine function, hormone gland production. I hope that helps. TJ, how do I get rid of H. pylori? I hope you guys are all working with a doctor. I hope you've had a test and know it's H. pylori. Broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts. Type into a Google, any Yahoo search tonight, or DuckDuckGo. Uh, broccoli sprouts, Helicobacter pylori. Watch what pops up. Pretty impressive. Broccoli sprouts. By God knew enough to put medicines here out of our food. Let food be your medicine and medicine your food. Conversely, eat out of cans and boxes and bags and need medicines. Think about it, a change of diet. Um, <clears throat> Laverne says, hey everybody, I haven't had a flu shot since 2006. Since I haven't had the flu <laughs> since 2006, yay. Thank you, Doug, for teaching us how to take care of our health. We have health assurance, and boy, there I, what have I seen? Seniors, come in and get your flu shot free. And then little tiny, little tiny, we'll take your insurance and bill them, you know, free, free. Um, just, uh, Gary says, what are you drinking? This is Mint Medley by Bigelow. Well, I don't want to tip it down too much. Mint Medley. It is delicious, Gary. You've got to get some of this. Just get a couple of bags and try it. Um, I, I wanted to, uh, oh, you guys. Uh, Maria, this is fascinating. After your recommendation, I got a Petri dish, put it in my house, and it's full of mold. I sent the, the dish off to a lab. I'm waiting now. What do I do? I will be getting a Pioneer. By the way, Chris called me. Did you know this, John? They got caught up. They were, you know, 100 units behind. This is the time, guys. We're living indoors, and I fear we're going to be living more indoors. 
Um, this is the time to get a Pioneer unit. You drink water at $2 a bottle. Think about your air. Clean air, clean water. I'm so impressed with these Pioneer units. What this 33 kilo Dalton enzyme that Dr. Uh, Richard Ablin discovered is, what makes that enzyme? Roy, tune in 2.30 Thursday, and I'll go over that. And finally today, Larry gets the last, oh gee, this is amazing. I had an enlarged prostate. I used natural antifungals. Later, my doctor gave me a PSA test, and, that I, and he said he, that was the lowest number for my age he had ever seen. Thank you, Doug. With that, I'll say thank you guys. By the way, the show, if you have cable, TV, Dish, or Direct, Damon and I are going to work on this, but I assure you by year's end, the early bird catches a worm. I can't afford TV time at 8 in the morning, prime time, or 8 in the evening. So I buy early, 7 a.m., 6.30 a.m. The early bird is going to catch good health. I hope you'll all watch me. Uh, starting in December here, and we'll give you all that information. I'm humbled. Thank you for joining me. My purpose in doing this is to get information out to you. First 10 or 15 minutes, just for my friend Roy, we're going to talk about what the PSA test might really be on Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Central. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.